So when you're shooting it, though, the people are just, but you have to sort of know where those things are going to go. You can't just go, okay, you know, have them stand over there and we'll just film them on green screen and then later on they'll be, you know, doing what we want. If you don't get the initial part right, then you're pretty much screwed because you can't, you can't change the angle on the actors. You can, but it's not, yeah, that's like another, don't do that. Uh, Thanks, dude. Yeah. That's good five questions. But, yeah. but it, is, um, it is well thought out because there's a whole lighting aspect of the whole thing, too, especially in bars, like where the sun is. And I think it's important to note that like, you draw all of your own storyboards, right? Yeah, so, I draw, so, yeah, I draw, so basically, you know, everyone has a pretty good idea about exactly what I'm sort of wanting to do based on the drawings. I mean, it's not, uh, it's not like, we don't arrive anywhere, hopefully, where people have a rough idea of what, where we're going to be with the camera and where, where you know, uh, what we're filming. And I, and I think that's how you get, by the way, that's how you get, in a movie like this, yeah, you, you have to do that because you can't, they won't let you build everything. You can only build what you're going to film. So, and the more you are economic about that, like I say, like, look, I promise you I will only see that genius bar sign and that is it. And, and, a lot of times, I, I, and I've done it myself, because sometimes you have to, you're going like, fuck, you know, I really wish I could be wider. And, you know, in that case, sometimes you're screwed because you don't have any set. There's just nothing over there. And then sometimes I'd have to say on the day, the DJ, like, dude, can you build me, like, more building down there? And he'd say, yeah. Did <laughs> <laughs> that really say like that? Yeah, kind of like that. Right. Exactly. Right. Right. Yeah, all right, yeah. yeah. Um, but, but the, you know, the point is to try and not do that, because then the money that you save from not doing that, you can build another small set. And I mean, this movie has 200 sets in it. You know, that's like a lot of sets. And, you know, it's just a lot of young lady right here. <laughs> The most sleepover, which element in, in adapting the book? Well, honestly, I think it was the sequence of Manhattan on Mars. Um, and I don't know, maybe it was giddy I lost sleep over it, or maybe I was just nervous, but it's this sequence where Dr. Manhattan is like, he's at a talk show, and then he gets ambushed by these reporters, and then he goes to Mars um, and sort of contemplates his place in the universe and sort of because he experiences time in this non-linear way, through a series of sort of flashbacks and forward, he, he brings himself up to date. And it was a sequence that was difficult, both from a technical standpoint, because we had tons of Manhattan in it, and we had virtual environments. He's like, he, the more vignette a sequence is, like say for instance, you're only going to shoot one shot, you know, or, they have a hard time saying, yeah, let's build a giant library, you know, for that one <laughs> stupid montage shot you're probably going to cut out. Um, but then, you know, so this sequence was just difficult from a production standpoint because everything in the sequence was like a one-off. And it's a, you know, a 12-minute sequence in the movie of just one shot after another. And it's a very, uh, and also it's, it's just risky also from a storytelling standpoint because Manhattan is sort of telling the story out of sequence. I mean, slightly in sequence, but he jumps around a little bit. And so, you know, that that sequence, which I, which is one of my favorite sequences actually in the movie, but also at the time was just difficult because, you know, he's like blowing up CG tanks, he's killing CG gangsters, he's just doing crazy stuff. I mean, that sequence is really effective. But also, so it's a weird, it's a lot of, so you can't, there's nothing to um, use again, you know. Even like from the technological, like the tank we blew up, like that's the only time you see it, you know. And so these guys had to build like a whole CG tank that kind of comes apart and goes back to it. But you know, that's for one shot. That's a bit of a deal. Maybe it'll be in another Sony movie someday. Possibly. Maybe. <laughs> that's, that's a good question for you, for you guys too, though. I mean, what what sequences? 
Because you, I mean, you guys didn't just work on Manhattan. You worked on the entire movie, and all, all the effects, everything. What sequence? Were there sequences where you lost sleep? Were there sequences where you came in? I would say the same sequence. Yeah. 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 I mean, honestly, it's like the whole idea of like Zach saying, there's, there's 200 sets. You know, it's that it's that idea of having to do build this thing because we have to build it in the computer, you know, in a, in a similar fashion. It's all virtual, but we have to build it the same, do the same thing. So, like that monster shot. We had to build these three monsters from the from the outside in, so their lungs, their bones, everything, because when Doc explodes them apart, all that stuff goes everywhere, and it's just it's one shot, and it's I remember it's 70 frames, and it's like you know it's and we called it 70 frames of glory because it was like it's in and it's gone, and then we had to move on to the next one. So, so it's really it's, it's the same thing. Yeah, mine was Kennedy session. Oh yeah. Uh, we did a shoot, we did a reenactment of the, you know, of Kennedy being assassinated, and we shot it, we were originally going to shoot it on this street in, uh, in a park in Vancouver, and then the, the uh, park workers went on strike, and so they wouldn't mow the lawn for us, <laughs> literally that's true, so we had this crazy tall grass, and we weren't allowed to mow it ourselves, because it was a union, so they were like, no, you can't mow like, That's why we're on strike. If you guys come in and mow the lawn, like, you're going to hire you all the time. No, um, so I was like, we're really expensive. We don't want to hire them. We're way more expensive than you guys. But then we, I found out that I, that I wasn't. They were actually No, but uh, the, uh, so those guys said no to us, so we had nowhere to go. So we ended up in this parking lot in, uh, in this amusement park. And DJ, like, we did all this research. And we found out the exact height of Daily Plaza, the exact height that Zabruder was standing at. It's, and we built a series of scaffolds. And it was crazy because on the day it just looked like crap. It looked crazy. Yeah. People on platforms, yeah. A road that was painted into, in the middle of the parking lot. But it was cool because it was a controlled environment and none of the. I mean, Zach didn't see the other locations they made me look at. You know, there was one that was like 45 degrees uphill. I'm like, what? You know, it was pretty flat. I don't know if everybody's going to be leaning like this in the picture, you know? And, uh, and that allowed us to control it and get the sun angle right, because the sun angle was pretty critical to the footage that everybody's seen a million times. And uh, it was very satisfying, I think, shooting it. It was one of the first shoots we did, even though it was a really technical shoot. And it came together really fast and really well because it was that much more thought out, I think. But I didn't lose sleep over it. Yeah, and we did like a couple of the shots that day too. Yeah. We shot that, like, we woke up, went there, shot it in the morning. It was one shot, but it's a, it's a long shot. And then we went and did something else. But it was crazy because, you know, it's one of those things you think, oh, God, you know, we're going to have to do this like a hundred times in order to get it right. But it was pretty cool. But it wasn't, it's not like, and it's not the Zabruder footage. Zabruder's in the foreground. The camera's like in Dolly, like, with, you know, the, with Kennedy's. Uh, are, you know, so it's very, we have a good Kennedy double piece. Uh, sir, back there in the stripe, uh, um, uh, what was one thing while you were filming as a director that, that kind of just snuck up on you, you didn't see coming that day of, or something that you adjusted to, that maybe something happened? What was the one thing as, when you were, as you were directing a movie that just snuck up on you, that you just didn't see coming? That happens all the time. <laughs> uh, in the sense that, it's a scheduling thing more than anything. You're like, you're all set to do a certain thing, and you really didn't look at a call sheet that carefully. <laughs> and they go, and they say things like, and I'm like, whoa, that was awesome, see, that was cool, all right guys, see you tomorrow. And they're like, no, 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 wait, we're also going to do this other giant scene. Like, and I'm like, what? Really? I felt like we pretty much shot our lawns on that. <laughs> I don't think I can... And so then they march you over and they do another one. And I, I mean, I think that was the biggest thing. I mean, it's funny. I always say.